yeah, this here, if you need to disconnect, you just unhook those. Here, I mean, I'm sure this one's probably pretty clean too. Yeah, it looks good. Stick her down in there somehow. This is gonna blast water everywhere, I'm sure of it. There's the filter. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right. Are you guys ready for a little bonus footage here? Let's take a look at this and see how this thing goes. We're here for an air conditioning call. Yeah, the truck's a mess. It's leaking water. It's got a plug drain line. I think you're gonna enjoy this. So we're gonna go ahead and grab some nitrogen and a hose and we're gonna get this thing blown out. And I think we're gonna need to clean the condenser and a few other things. It's uh, probably one of the nicer installs that I've seen. So I think you're gonna enjoy this. This is the drain line coming out right here. It comes across and dips down, which can cause a double trap, which it really ain't trapped up there. It comes down to here. We've got a little drippage down there. So this is one of the poor condensers. It feels really super hot on the liquid line. It's cranking some heat out here. Yeah, it's pretty poor, partially plugged off there. Yeah, it's pretty matted. So we'll probably need to wash these out. That must be the cooler over there. Chances are, oh wow, look at that disconnect box. Uh, that's fine, that's just that clear clear coating. That's, that's perfectly fine. Um, yeah, this here, if you need to disconnect, you just unhook those. And um, cover is removed to make it a little easier. I'd say that's probably why that one there don't run. That one's turned off. So I'd say it probably went bad. Well, we might as well look at the condenser coil over here. I mean, I'm sure this one's probably pretty clean too. Yeah, it looks good. We have to use either a bucket and wash this out with a bucket and my little porta blaster or something. Now it does have a cap there, but I think it's open on top. Can't tell. <laughs> yeah, I got a little bit of water there. So the bottom one there is what's running. You see the flex duck Arona. It's not running on top. It's not, must not be no good. Try to carry this stuff without tripping and busting light bulbs. Yeah, I already took a cover off. Okay, what we're gonna do, we're gonna see if we can blow out this drain right through there. That's why I brought the regular hose here instead of my little blow gun. And of course, they always gotta put a line right in the way to block that drain hole. Let's see if we can get that open and stick her down in there somehow. This is gonna blast water everywhere, I'm sure of it. They put that stinking elbow right in the way. There we go, oh yeah, there we go, we got her in there. This is gonna make a mess. Ugh, that was great. There it goes. You got nasty crap here in the pan. Let's see if we can dig some of that out with our finger. We may just take the hose and blast it this direction, see if we can blow it out. That is, that is pretty, pretty gruesome. Feels like the airflow is coming through pretty good. Like I said, that baby is running really warm. Cold suction, but I'm afraid when we clean this, it's gonna possibly be low on charge because the head pressure is gonna drop, so will our suction. Put my hand up here the last time and kind of, fell through that when I pushed myself up. They've got a union right there. A union right there. Let's see if we can blast some of that crap out. I don't want it to plug up later. That worked out pretty good. I can blow that all off too while we're at it. That'll work for now. There's no trap, it's a positive pressure on the coil. 
Today's Friday, guys. I'm having fun, so don't think I'd ever complain about something like this. This, to me, is just awesome. If we can make this old turd run again without making a mess, then, boy, we just accomplished something great in life. Not sure where the air filter's at. I'm sure it's got one somewhere. Now, let's see if we can go downstairs and clean that condenser unit out. There's the filter. There we go. I'm gonna leave these down. That way somebody hopefully will put a new filter in there because I don't carry those on my truck. So we've got a place here where we can get the water at. So we got this right here. We'll hook a adapter onto it. It's got decent flow, so it should be pretty good. And we go right out this outside door, which is great. Perfect. It gets us right out here to us. That's perfect. So let's go ahead and get the hose out and get some work done here. I carry some 50 footers and then my really good rubber hose, which is 75 foot. And then I've got two of these nozzles because I lost one and then I found it. Does not appear that anything leaked out when I blew it out out here. Probably grab a little piece of strap and probably could lift this up a little bit. Very likely this could be causing it to gum up. That's a big old trap. So here's the adapter. I switched mine to an O-ring. That tends to keep it from leaking. I lost the rubber one. There we go. Yeah, it's all packed fast, full of crap too. Okay. Well, to keep this thing from running, we can yank the low voltage. Wow, the low voltage, plug air off. Or we probably just undo one of this. It might be the easiest, safest way. And we don't have to screw with the breaker and try to find that. It's probably turn into a Fandango trying to find it. We're gonna knock it all off and then we'll start spraying it from the inside out. This thing's gonna run like a new champion. Some people feel like you need to take this all apart. If you knock it off from the outside, then spray it from the inside out. You don't need to do all that. Looks like you're doing a great job, but really it's a waste of time. And then I'll usually shoot it sideways and knock it off and then I'll come, like I said, come back through it. So we're just gonna knock it off. And I'm not hitting it hard enough it's bending the coils over or anything like that. See that chunk's coming out? I guess this must be, she must be renting this. So I have a feeling the landlord was not wanting to take care of it. So it sounds like this has been going on for a while. So the person running the store is at no fault here. Oh man, check that out. It's like WWF or something. Oh, WWE, there you go. Look at that. These are really easy to clean, which is kind of nice because they're only one coil thick. Most important thing you can do as a homeowner is wash out your coil. This right here is half your problems. Notice chunks aren't coming out because we knocked them all off first. Okay, one thing I always like to see is that reversible plug taped together. That way it doesn't unplug itself. One way to prevent a possible return call. So we'll go ahead and get that done. Doesn't take a lot. Figure it didn't come apart on its own to begin with, but a little bit of extra here is not gonna hurt. So we've got that there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tape a little bit of this electrical together and we'll wire tie it to the top. Obviously getting it replaced probably is not in the cards. Tape will hold up longer than what wire ties will. So what I used to do is always tape it and then maybe put a wire tie around it. I don't have conduit or anything like that in my truck to do it fancy like. Tape will protect it from the UV light a little bit better than nothing at all. 
and that'll help keep it from falling down in the fan. Sometimes you just gotta make do with what you've got to work with. May not agree with that, but not everybody lives in Beverly Hills and has crap loads of money to buy brand new units. I know the sales technicians out there don't realize that. Contactor, a little dirty. I'm not gonna go for making everything perfect just because you're gonna get asked, why'd you do this, why'd you do that? I can just feel it, just feel it. If the compressor's pulling high amps, whatever the case, what are you gonna do about it? Okay, we got our hook back up. The trick you can do is you can actually use your screwdriver, hold the contactor in, put the wires together. That way it doesn't rapid cycle them. It's dangerous, but you need to be careful what you're gonna do it that way. This does have a manual reset limit down there, so obviously the fan hasn't stopped. It's a newer looking fan, obviously, because it was replaced. Blowing some nice cool air for right now. Hopefully that warms up here in a second. Strapped up there, tap con that bad boy onto the wall. It's not coming down and it still slopes. So as it's coming down, it goes on down. It'll slope nonstop. So you've got almost two bricks. So probably about eight inches, six inches of drop between here and there. So it's better than what it was. Air coming out now is hot. And suction is still cold. So chances are we're probably fine. All right, so we got our little green hose out there. He's always folded up really nice. Gonna knock this all off. It's gonna help it breathe. Now, like I said, this can cause artificial head pressure. So if the unit was low in charge, you may have just created a problem. Now, granted, I shouldn't say you created a problem. You just made a problem evident, and now they may blame you for it. So if you're gonna do this, even though you're trying to do something good for the customer, make sure the side glass and stuff's full. If not, you better let them know, hey, I washed that off while I was here, and I noticed this needs to be done, blank, blank. Uh, would you like to handle that now? And then that way, you can mark that on your ticket. Uh, seen this, did this, customer chose not to do it. And that way you're not blamed for it later. Now all we're doing right now is knocking the thick uh, coating off the outside and we'll work our way down through it in a minute. Uh, like I said, I like to try to keep it dry as possible so that when it hits it, it just knocks it right off. If you hit it with a light coating of water, it'll just make it tacky and it'll stick there and then it doesn't want to let go. That kind of takes a lot longer to do it. This thing is so matted, oh my goodness. It's coming through. I didn't ask for permission, so we're just gonna do a courtesy, courtesy flush here. I think we're pretty busy today. It's been a hot week for us, and it's been really crazy. I'm just trying to prevent potential more calls later on something that was preventable while you were here. You know, it seems like I talk a lot, but you know, we're sitting here, just me and you, and you're not saying nothing. So since you're not talking, I've got to keep talking. I'm just telling you what works good for me. If you get something out of it, great. If you don't, I'll refund your money back. Always make sure that works when you're done. There you go. One of the things I use for my hose here, makes it a little easier to keep it all together. Got a wire tied there on there. That uh, helps keep it all nice and tightly wound up. Just the cheap ones from Lowe's. Wrap it, it's called. Yeah, this one here is a Husky. So that's my bigger one. Got the uni strut on the back door, not only to hang things on it, but also to make it a little harder for somebody to reach through and get into the truck. Which I've got a paging alarm and all that on there your crap ripped off once good enough running 80 pounds suction 48 degrees we get a quick measurement on the suction and suction temperature will know our superheat but from what i see it's all fine been working biggest thing was you were leaking water temperature's dropping on that got the clamp right there So we had 48 before, there's 57, 56, 
Chances are somebody may have overcharged it just to make up for a dirty coil. About eight degrees, nine degrees superheat. And as hot as that store is, it's probably about right. All right. All right, I'm good here. We're not going for the gold, but we did enough to get her more than just fixing the leak. There's no problem, it's just fixing the leak. We ended up washing out the coil because we felt the liquid line was hot. We just gained capacity big time by doing that. Walking cooler over there, which is running now. Let's see how that looks. Side glass is full. Yep, nice and full. Not why I'm here, so I'm not digging into it. There we go. All right, a little bit warm out there, guys. To sum it up, basically we had a we had a water leak on the floor. The problem was we decided to fix the water leak. Then we went ahead and looked into the system because we used the hand touch method. Hand touch method is nothing more than going through with your hands and touching the components of the refrigeration system. Checking the liquid line, does it feel abnormally hot? Is it much above body temperature? Is it really hot? You know, is it cool? What's the suction like? Is it really ice cold, beer can cold? Is it just lukewarm? Is it warm? Is the compressor running super hot? Uh, condenser fan motor, does it feel hot? You know, if, you're, if the blower motor, all those sort of things uh, that you can do without even getting your tools out or your gauges out. Once you train your hand to be able to feel these things, you can go through and, and self-diagnose a lot of the problems by just touching and feeling. If you've watched a lot of my videos in the beginning, I'll sit there and touch different parts of the units. Sometimes I call it out what I'm doing, other times I'm just waiting to see if somebody actually picks up on it. For guys that's been doing it for years and years, they know that's nothing new, that's just common sense. That was something they used to teach in the heat pump classes. So anyhow, that's how we end up getting led into going and looking at the condenser unit. You know, we fixed the drain line that was hanging, which sagging, which is gonna make a trap, which then plugs up. Uh, more likely with that trappish type uh, hoopy log going on there. Went ahead and did them a service by washing out the condenser unit, making sure that that's clean, making sure the sight glass is cool, clean, uh, or cl making sure the sight glass is clear. And you know, I'm not talking about going through and doing full service because they didn't ask for that. Now, if you wanted to go ask them, fine, but if you're not, you know, if you're not busy, but if you're busy, you ain't got time for all that. So, you know, originally the reason why I made these videos was to try to help them and you guys. Now it's a lot to just more for entertainment for other people that just enjoy watching me work. And, you know, and just the pure satisfaction of knowing that maybe I made a difference. And that's the reason why I do it. So I really appreciate you guys subscribing. I know that we've had quite a few over the last several months. We hit the 30,000 mark, soon to hit 31,000, which is really awesome. Especially being as I got the slow start that I got. And, you know, that's a long story. So, so I just want to thank you guys. I want to thank you for watching it. I want to thank you for the thumbs up. I love the interaction. I love hearing back from you guys. It means a lot. And because uh, I mean, there's times where, you know, I'm doing this on a Saturday night, Sunday night when I'd rather be out playing, uh, having some fun since I worked all week. Here I am rehashing what I've already done through the week. And, you know, it, it's great to see the payoff, to see the higher re uh, view numbers and things like that. It makes a huge difference. So uh, that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.